Hello, and welcome to my channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. The videos are based on content from my book of the same name. It is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. Now, statistics is confusing, even for intelligent technical people. Many people are confused by the difference between the two possible outcomes of a hypothesis test. These are reject the null hypothesis and fail to reject the null hypothesis. This video focuses on reject the null hypothesis. There is a separate video on fail to reject the null hypothesis. In both videos, we employ this marriage proposal scenario as part of our clarification of these two confusing concepts. As usual, in the book and in these videos, we'll start out with a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs, so that you can see on one page the most important things to understand about the concept. In this video, there are four keys to understanding for the concept of reject the null hypothesis. Let's go through the list fairly quickly and then follow that with a detailed explanation of each key. The first part of key to understanding standing number one is reject the null hypothesis is one of two possible conclusions from a hypothesis test. And the second part of KTU number one is the other possible conclusion is fail to reject the null hypothesis. Key to understanding number two states that if P is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. Key to understanding number three, the null hypothesis states that there is no statistically significant difference, change, or effect. KTU number four, so to reject the null hypothesis is to conclude that there is a statistically significant difference, change, or effect. Okay, here on one page is the complete list of keys to understanding for the concept of reject the null hypothesis. You may want to pause the video here and read them all together. And here, in case it makes it more memorable, is a preview of the outcome of the marriage proposal scenario. Her response of rejecting the null hypothesis actually accepts the marriage proposal. As her suitor seems to understand, reject in this case means yes. We'll soon explain exactly how that works. Let's now begin our detailed explanation of each key to understanding. Our first key to understanding, or KTU, says reject the null hypothesis is one of two possible conclusions from a hypothesis test. The other conclusion is fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now there are three concepts in that statement which may require further explanation. First, what is a hypothesis test? We'll cover that in our explanation of this key to understanding, or KTU number one, starting with the next slide. Second, how do we come to a conclusion about a hypothesis test? We'll cover that in our explanation of KTU number two. And third, what is a null hypothesis? That will be covered under KTU number three. First of all, what is a hypothesis test? Hypothesis testing and confidence intervals are the two main method, methods used in inferential statistics. In inferential statistics, we take a sample of data from a population or process and we calculate a numerical property, for example, the mean from the sample. We then use the value of this sample property, the sample mean, to infer or estimate the value of the corresponding property of the population or process, that is, the population or process mean. And here are the five steps for doing a hypothesis test. This five-step method will be explained in detail in a separate video on hypothesis testing. This video is about step five, what we conclude at the end of a hypothesis test. In the next key to understanding in this video, 
KTU number two, is about how we select one of those two conclusions. Hint, we're going to use alpha from step two of this five-step method, and we'll also use P from step four. Step two in the five-step method gave us a value for alpha, and step four gave us a value for P. This gives us what we need for key to understanding number two. If P is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, if P is greater than alpha, then we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But that is a subject of another video. P and alpha are also subjects of other videos. But here's a brief explanation. First, P is the actual probability of an alpha error in the hypothesis test we are doing. It is calculated from the sample data and the probability distribution of a test statistic such as T or Z. This is step four of the hypothesis testing method. But what is an alpha error? An alpha error, which is also known as a type one error or a false positive, is the error of concluding that there is a statistically significant difference change or effect when in reality there is not. There's no avoiding the fact that P must be greater than zero since we are making an inference which is an estimate from a sample and an estimate will never have a zero percent chance of being wrong. But we can state up front the maximum probability we are will willing to accept and still call the results statistically significant. That maximum probability is alpha. Alpha is the level of significance. In step two of the five-step method of hypothesis testing, the person performing the test selects a value for alpha. Most commonly, 5% is selected. As the illustration shows, alpha defines the boundary between the values of P which indicate a statistically significant difference, change, or effect in those which don't. This becomes the threshold. If P is subsequently calculated to be 8%, let's say, then P is greater than alpha, and we fail to reject the null hypothesis. If P is subsequently calculated to be 4%, then P is less than alpha, and we reject the null hypothesis. We can graphically depict what's going on here with what are called acceptance and rejection regions. The acceptance region is also known as the fail to reject region. Both alpha and P are cumulative probabilities. That is, they are probabilities of ranges of values. They are plotted as areas under the curve of the distribution of a test statistic. Alpha is plotted as a shaded area under one or both tails of the curve. Here we plot alpha equals 5% under the right tail of the curve of the dist distribution of the test statistic Z. The shaded area representing alpha is called the rejection region, and the unshaded area is called the acceptance region or the fail to reject region. Let's look at a close-up of the right tail of the curve shown previously. The fail to reject region will be unshaded and white. Alpha, representing the rejection region, will be shown as shaded. And the area under the curve representing P will be hatched. The hatch marks representing P are overlays that can cover both unshaded and shaded areas. If P is less than or equal to alpha, then we reject the null hypothesis. In the second column, we show a close-up of the right tail of the bell-shaped curve we showed earlier. This illustrates the case where P is less than or equal to alpha. Alpha is represented as a shaded area under the curve. This shaded area is the rejection region. We fill in the shaded area from the right end of the tail with hatch marks representing P. The hatched area representing P is smaller than the shaded area representing alpha. The hatched area representing P fits entirely within 
the rejection region representing alpha. Since P can fit entirely into the rejection region, our conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. Note how the critical value, Z critical, marks the boundary of alpha and the test statistic, Z, marks the boundary of P. If P is less than or equal to alpha, then its boundary, the test statistic Z, is farther away from zero than alpha's boundary, which is the critical value. So the test statistic value being greater than or equal to the critical value is the same thing as P being less than or equal to alpha. The third, the third column is the subject of its own video, but briefly, we fail to reject the null hypothesis if P is calculated to be greater than alpha, or equivalently, if the test statistic value, Z in this example, is less than the critical value, Z critical. Let's move on to key to understanding number three. The null hypothesis can be a confusing concept itself, so we have a separate video for it. But briefly, the null hypothesis states that there is no difference or no change or no effect. If the null hypothesis states that there is no statistically significant difference, change, or effect, then if we reject the null hypothesis, we are concluding that there is a statistically significant difference, change, or effect. In case it helps, here's another way to look at it. A positive statement would be, there is a statistically significant difference between the two means. Let's give this a logical value of plus one. The null hypothesis is always a negative statement. It is a negation of the positive statement. Plus one multiplied by the negation, negative one, equals negative one. If we reject the null hypothesis, we negate it. So we multiply negative one for the negation due to reject times negative one for the null hypothesis, and we get plus one, which is the positive statement. There is a statistically significant difference between the two means. Okay, we started with this marriage proposal scenario. What have we learned? She is rejecting the null hypothesis. But what would be the null hypothesis? It would be that she wants there to be no difference, no change, or no effect as a result of his proposal. Prior to her responding to his proposal, this couple was not engaged to be married. If she wanted no, wanted no difference or no change in that status, if she wanted her response to have no effect on that status, then she would accept the null hypothesis. She would fail to reject it but she does reject it, so there is a difference, change, or effect as a result of his proposal and her response. Their new status is engaged to be married. Okay, that's it for our clarification of this confusing concept. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. Now videos like this one can be very helpful but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can learn more about those on the website statisticsfromatoz.com. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website has a listing of available and planned videos. I'd recommend following my blog, which is on the website. I've got some posts there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'm also posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and Twitter as at stats A to Z. And here's my email. I'm looking forward to communicating with you.